Hi there and welcome back to the DSA class. My dear friends, now that you understood what is the need for data structures and algorithms and what a world of difference it can make for you as a programmer, now it's time for us to get serious and deep dive into the concept. Anyways, before I start, let me tell you that you will never ever be a successful competitive programmer. You will never successfully master data structures and algorithms without adding a layer of mathematics to it. Now the moment I say mathematics, you might be wondering what does mathematics have to do with data structures and algorithms? What does mathematics have to do with computer science? Well, my answer to that, my dear friend, is that mathematics not only has something to do with data structures and algorithms, mathematics has something to do with 9 out of 10 things that you see around you because mathematics is a way to represent, to understand the natural phenomena which occurs around us in the form of numbers and equations. Just to give you a couple of examples, if in case tomorrow you decide that it is trading which you want to do and you want to master the stock market, then you have to understand these graphs, you know, these candlestick algorithms, etc., which has mathematical basis to it. In understanding the math behind it, you will not only master the algorithm, you will also master the entire market itself. Let us assume we fall sick and go to the hospital. Do you know 9 out of 10 times doctors diagnose the problem that a patient has using softwares and these softwares use complex mathematical computations in the background to take data and interpret it and to diagnose the problem with the patient. Not only that, if in case you want to launch a spaceship into space, let me tell you that a spaceship is nothing but complex mathematical equations, huge software, complex software managing the entire spaceship and that way the foundation of rocket science is nothing but mathematics. That way most of the natural phenomena that we observe on earth and around us in the universe also has mathematical basis to it. For example, speed and distance can be mathematically represented, mathematically computed. The flow of time can be mathematically represented. Gravity can be mathematically represented. That way, even the existence of a black hole has been proven mathematically because nobody has been able to touch, see or feel a black hole because if you ever encounter a black hole, you will share the same fate as me, like this. Now, the moment you realize that you have to learn mathematics, some of you will be panicking and you might think that, oh, I have to learn so much of mathematics, you know, I'll be drowning in max. No, my friend. You don't have to learn all the mathematics, neither am I going to give you a refresher course of all the math you have learnt in your life. Rather, there are few concepts which you must know. If you know these concepts, the way your program will work will be in a different level of efficiency, both in terms of the time it takes to execute and also in terms of the temporary memory that it will be occupying in your computer. What do I mean by all this? Let me show you. All right, now my friend, let me tell you why exactly learning these mathematical operations can really supercharge your competitive programming skills. Just to give you an example, right? Now let us think about the computer who's executing your program, right? Because ultimately it's not you and me who's going to execute the program, it's the computer. And you know, in the computer, it is the central processing unit or the CPU which is the heart of the computer and it is the CPU which is going to actually execute your program. Now that you understood that the CPU is the one who is executing the program, let us try and understand and look at this from the perspective of the CPU. Now please understand, that is the CPU, right? Always the CPU needs the support of a memory device to perform its operations and let us assume that is the main memory of the computer which is always directly connected to the CPU and this is something which we have already explored in depth any which way. Let us assume this is the program which the CPU has to execute. Obviously, when this program's instruction flows into the CPU, obviously in the form of binary bits, what the CPU is going to do is it's going to start executing these instructions and as it is going to execute the instructions, it is also going to utilize the memory associated with it and the memory which initially is completely empty is going to fill up like this. And to completely and successfully execute this program, the CPU, it's naturally going to take some time. And today's CPUs are so fast, I'm just showing the time in the form of nanoseconds. So clearly you can see that in order to execute a program, there is some time 
that the CPU takes. There is some memory which it occupies in the computer. Technically speaking, the analysis of how much time a particular program takes to execute and how much space a particular program occupies during its execution is called as time complexity and space complexity respectively. Now this entire course is aimed towards instilling one line of thought into your heads which is you as programmers not, should not only be mechanically writing code which will give you an output, you should be writing such beautiful, elegant and efficient code which ultimately will reduce the time complexity, will reduce the space complexity. And let me tell you, if your effort is to reduce the time and space complexity, mathematical operations is a very, very good weapon to have with you in order to fight that battle. What do I mean by this? Let me give you a simple example. Let us assume, my dear friend, I want to calculate the sum of the first n natural numbers. This is the problem statement which I have. Now, there are multiple ways in which one can be doing this. Let me show you the obvious way one would choose was, let us assume n value is 10. You list out all the n natural numbers till 10. And if you have to find the sum, you are going to put the addition operator in between all of them. And if in case you add it, this is the result that you will get. Great. But I want you to now start thinking in terms of operations. Just look at this approach and tell me how many operations did you have to perform to get the sum of the first 10 natural numbers. If you look at the plus operation, the addition operation, you have used it a total of 9 times. But if you knew a simple mathematical formula to do the same, which is nothing but this formula, which is the sum of n natural numbers, then just substitute the value of n which is 10 and you get the same output, the same result. But what I want you to understand is, look at the number of operations. One multiplication, one addition, one division operation. Three operations, nine operations. Three times more operation this consumes. Three times lesser operation this consumes. So naturally, which do you think will be executed faster by the CPU? Obviously, it is this one. Which one do you think will occupy less memory in the CPU? Obviously, it is this one. Time complexity, space complexity wise, obviously, this is much, much more efficient than this approach. So, simple mathematical formulas can make a lot of difference in the efficiency of your program. Anyways, I hope it is crystal clear to you why we have to invest some time in learning few mathematical concepts and how to apply them in programming. Well, then what are we really waiting for? Let's get started.